Welcome at this presentation on PLC Open Motion Control, where I will show you how easy it is to develop your application by using the PLC Open defined motion control libraries. And you can do that independent of the controller, independent of the hardware. Hello, my name is Ilke van der Wall, and I'm the managing director of the organization PLC Open. There is a separate presentation on PLC Open Motion Control in a different movie. This is just a very short overview. This is a graphical representation of a function block with the name on top, move absolute, the inputs on the left with the corresponding data types, the outputs on the right, and what you see is that on top there's a reference to the axis. The function block is the software view on the underlying technology. So in the hardware, you will have an interface that goes via network to your intelligent drive, your motor and your encoder, or you go directly to the power stages of your drive. From a software point of view, it looks the same. Move absolute is move absolute. We call this encapsulation information hiding, and it creates an independence of your hardware, your underlying control architecture. Now let's look at the examples. So the first example is a labeling example, where we have a product lying on a configure that is driven by a motor. So it, it's transported from left to right, and we detect the front of the product, and we want to put a label on it. So the label has a label drive, and when the product reaches the the sensor distance, then the label is put on that one. So this is how it looks. It moves from left to right, and with the same velocity as the product is moving, so the same velocity the configure is moving, we put a label on that one. Now, if we look to the application program for this one, you see, first of all, the two motors that we have. So the move velocity on the bottom drives the configure. And it does that with a certain velocity that's specified on the left. On the top, you see the move relative for the label. So there's a certain label length that we see here as a position input. And we want to execute it. We want to start it at the moment that we the product is detected and the sensor diff distance divided by the velocity because that gives a time. So that's the delay between the detection of the product and the starting of putting the label on it. So this is how easy it is in that sense. Of course, we can do a lot of improvements here. Yeah? If, if I, I do not detect anything on the label, the, the uh, uh, processing part, the label drive. So that means that I can have a, a small drift there and you will see that moving. So a detection would help. A faster touch probe would help still create the accuracy. We can use a cam in or a gear and pass to have a better synchronization between the label and the product itself. And if the product gets smaller than the sensor distance, so we get more smaller products in between, I need something like a 5.0 first in, first out to keep track on that one. So these are all kinds of improvements that I got to think about it in developing the application because it increases the flexibility. So if I change the product for some reason, that does not mean that I have to uh, redo my application program. Yeah? We can make it more stable in that sense. A second example is what I call a warehousing example, where we want to take out a pallet out of, which is at a certain po position. Uh, you see the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So it wants to retrieve the pallet to take out the products that are there. The application program in that sense consists of two parts. First of all, is we go to the point where the pallet is. Yeah? So assuming that we come from a, a the origin, a, a, the zero position. We have a certain position velocity, a profile with two move absolutes. And when they have reached their position, they are both done, I can move the fork into the pallet. Then the second part of this program means that I lift the fork, I'll take it out again, and I get back to the delivery point. And so two move absolutes in the end. And the fork lift is a move relative in this sense, and the move absolute is again to take it out. 
simple. I can do this a little bit better with the motion control function blocks that are defined in part four. I create a group and I start moving with that group. So you see here that on the left part, you see the position X, position Y and zero position Z. Those are the positions of the axis group. So I move to the pallet position. I get my fork into the pallet, so that's only a Z movement. I lift it, it's only a Y movement of the group. I go with the fork out of the pallet, that's again a Z, and I go back to my delivery, being the origin, zero, zero, zero. The nice thing to in doing is that this one is that the function block itself will optimize the movements. So the X and Y in getting to the pallet will make sure that they arrive in the same time. That means you get less wear and tear and less energy consumption in this movement. It's optimized. All these movements are optimized for that one. But that's a benefit to use part four. Another example is winding or unwinding of the paper for the wrapping of the product or even uh, the making of the label in that sense. And you normally, if you wind and unwind, you want a certain torque on the material that you wind and unwind. Yeah? And for that one, you have to use something that we call a denser control. The graphical representation of a function block of a winding with CSE, constant surface velocity, could look like this. Yeah. We have a spool radius, a minimum, maximum radius, when we're done there, acceleration and a profile, acceleration, deceleration, jerk, the velocity, busy in velocity, arrow, arrow idea, standard. Internally, if we double click, it would open and we see the, the standard function blocks that we use there. So move velocity, a stop, and we have to calculate. So we have, we have to define certain aspects in order to get this functionality up and running. And you see how we generate the in velocity to the error and the error idea. So internally, this is the functionality of the function block itself. And then we encapsulate in that sense. And this encapsulation is important for us because we create a function block with a higher functionality based on the existing function block that we already know. And that's important for us in creating your application program in a reusable way in that sense. So you use the basic function block libraries like motion, logic, and with that, very much like shown with the winding, you create your own function block libraries which contain a higher level functionality, much closer to your application, your specifics there. And your application software in that case gets very small because it just calls the instances of these function blocks. And we always advise to have on top of that one a state machine. So the behavior of your machine or of your production line or even if a part of your machine is the same all over the different products there. That's easier to start it up, to, to control it and to even do your maintenance on it. PLC open motion control consists of a suite of specifications and that resulted in a suite of implementations from a, a high group of suppliers. And that means they have a very fast going set of users in that sense. And because they see that this provides a suite of advantages. Like mentioned, the details are in a different movie on, on this matter. So these are just the examples. Basically, PLC Open merged logic, motion, and safety onto one platform that provides you structuring, decomposition, reuse, and in the end, less training. Once you learn it on, for one platform, you can use it on any of the platforms that are supported. On top of that one, we added communication, exchange, and we do training guidelines. There are separate presentations on all these items, so check on those. Our tagline is for efficiency and automation, and I hope I showed you that by using our libraries, you can become more efficient in developing your automation applications. Of course, we need your help too. We need your help in 
getting the specifications done to make them usable for your environments and you can support our organization by joining as a member and make your voice known. More information and the downloads of the specifications itself, check our website peelsjobben.org and if you want to contact me, my email address is on the bottom here. Thank you for watching. There will be more movies available, so keep in touch with us, keep in contact. And I thank you for your time and attention. Bye for now.